Hi, I'm Christian Düring from Innocent and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and start working with a 24GHz FMCW radar system in less than 30 minutes. If you're watching this video you have probably tried or at least thought about implementing radar motion detection into one of your products in the past, but at the time it might have just looked too complex or you didn't have the time to familiarize yourself with the technology. Imagine there would be a system that you can just put on your desk hook up to your computer and start experimenting with radars right away without having to solder any cables, interfaces or even write your own source code. Well the good news is that's exactly what you can do with our SMR development kit and I'm going to show you how it works. Let's take a look at the hardware. This is how the evaluation kit looks like. It consists of a microcontroller board. This is the part that will connect to your computer and where you will be uploading your firmware to. Included in this kit is our custom open firmware that you can use right out of the box or modify as much as you like to fit your requirements. The next part is this green PCB card. This is the interface board that is needed to connect the radar to the microcontroller. To give you an example of how to integrate these radar modules into your system, you will find a complete circuit diagram including part numbers and component values of the interface board in the user manual. And now for the main feature of this kit, the radar. This is the flagship device of our SMR series radar modules. It's a nice and tiny 24 GHz radar. As you can see it's an SMD mountable device and it's capable of working as a Doppler radar or a frequency modulated continuous wave radar. The hardware comes pre-assembled. After you take it out of the box all you need to do is install the device drivers and software. You will find all the download links and installation instructions in our quick start guide. Once you installed all the software, all you need to do is to connect the system to one of your computer's USB ports. And once it's connected, the LEDs on the unit should turn on, and we are ready to take a look at the software that comes with the system. Remember that I promised you that you will be able to set up the radar in less than 30 minutes? Well, you will be spending the better part of this time downloading and installing software. I already did that before recording this video. What you should end up with after the installation are these two programs. The one on top is the system workbench for the ST controller board and the one below is our graphically user interface for the radar. This will help you to see the signals that come out of the radar. But let's start with the system workbench first. This is the software you will need to be able to program the microcontroller. Once you start it, it asks you for a workspace directory. You are free to choose where to put your workspace, I put mine in home, software. It will ask you for a workspace directory every time you start it. You can disable that by clicking the checkbox here. It should come up in the welcome screen. In that screen just click on the workbench icon in the top right corner and you will see an empty workbench. Now it's time to import the firmware. It's included in the software package that you have downloaded from the EVV page. In that package you will find the folder called SMR Evol Kit. This is the folder that contains the firmware. You can just copy that to your workbench folder. Ok, once copying is finished, right click on the Project Explorer, click on Import and in the next window select the option to include an existing project into the workspace. Click on Next and select the firmware directory. It will automatically find the project in the folder. Then click on Finish and you should see the project in the Project Explorer. Ok, before we start the radar for the first time, let's check what the configuration settings are. To do that, go to the configuration file and check the modulation for example, or the start and stop frequency, or whatever you would like to change. In this case, the radar is already set to CW mode. This is what we are going to take a look at first. To compile and upload the software to the controller, right click on the project folder and then select clean project. After that, refresh and then build project. The build progress window will show up and you will see some output on the console. The build progress will take up to a few minutes. On my machine it took me one and a half minutes. After that is done it's time to upload and start the firmware. To do that click on the debug icon and select AC6 STM32 as your target. The ST software will then upload the firmware to the controller and it will notify you that it will switch to a debug perspective. In this perspective you will find all the debug controls to start, pause and stop the controller and what we do next is to click on the run button to start the execution of the firmware on the device. After that we start the SMR evaluation kit user interface. In here we need to select the right COM port and click on the connect button. 
The firmware includes some calibration modes to set the radar to the right frequency. While this happens, there will be no output signal that's visible in the interface, so don't get nervous if it takes a few seconds until signals show up after you have clicked on the connect button. Right now we're in Doppler mode and there's nothing moving in front of the radar, that's why the IF signals are flat lines and what we see in the frequency spectrum is just the noise floor of the system. When I move my hand in front of the radar you will see some sine waves in the I and Q channel and in the FFT you will see some peaks either on the left side or on the right side of the spectrum. That just depends on the movement direction of my hand. One side represents all the objects that move toward the radar and the other side shows targets that move away from the radar. Alright, so much for the Doppler mode of the radar, now let's take a look at the FMCW mode of the radar. To do that, disconnect from the device in the user interface and close the user interface. Go back to the system workbench to stop the controller, then switch back to the display mode for the source code to get back to the configuration file. In here we change the define for the modulation from 0 CW mode to 1 FMCW mode. In order for the changes to take effect, we have to rebuild the project. To do that, right click on the project folder and select Build Project. The Build Progress window will show up again, and once this is finished, go back to the debug mode and restart the processor. After that, make sure to restart the user interface, click on Connect, and we will see that the modulation has changed to FMCW. What you see now is that you don't have any straight lines anymore, even though there's nothing moving in front of the radar. This is because the FMCW radar can detect stationary objects as well, and what you see here are signals from your ceiling, the walls, or anything that's close to the radar. And that's it. Now you have a radar sensor that's ready to go, and you can go back to the software, take a deeper look into the firmware we provide with the system, or modify some parameters and play with the radar. How fast have you been able to set up your system? If you like, please share your experience with us in the comments below, and thank you for watching.